Hey, 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 you two, welcome to the Ukraine update. And I got a special, special little treat from my beautiful wife. We're starting off the Ukraine uh, update today with a little pierogi treat. We have some pierogies right here. These are homemade pierogies I bought at a farmer's market made by a wonderful old lady who was selling out. The pierogies were almost gone. And we did a couple laps, you know, around the around the farmer's market. And by the time I did a second lap, she was totally sold out. So these, I, I have high hopes about these pierogies. And if you don't know, pierogies are a Ukrainian treat. Um, very delicious. A little, they're not, they're not like dumplings. They're not like dumplings. All right, so let's give it a shot here. Got a little bit of sour cream. Try this out. Hmm. Oh, that's good. That's good. You know, it's interesting, though. I've noticed that pierogies, there's not a lot of salt. There's not a lot of, like, they're, it's kind of a bland food. It's kind of a bland food, I gotta say. There's, like, is that intentional, Cam Goblin? Am I supposed to be dipping into this, like, some kind of, like, sauce that is just, like, super flavorful because yeah that's this uh, that's what i'm noticing about these pierogies and i also had some store-bought pierogies i had a little bit ago very not a lot of salt not a lot of you know very bland very bland still good though still good hmm. yes cam goblin we can see your messages buddy we can see your message Another war where the elite gain and innocent people die. Okay, I guess it's time we do this. Let me hit pause on the record. All right, we're back to it. Back to the recording, folks. Okay, here we go. Um, I promise to watch. Is the person that posted this video still here? Is that is Dirty Crackhead still here? I don't want to watch this. Oh, here it is. Here's the video I was looking for. Here we go. I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna play this next time. I feel like everyone's uh, asleep in the chat. Yeah, the same thing here, Draven's Lowell. Iraq, Afghanistan, Vietnam, Cuba, fucking Syria, you know, what we're doing to Iran and Venezuela. Totally agree with you. I'm not sitting here, def I'm not NAFO. I'm not sitting here defending fucking military industrial complex in the United States. But I, I am so sick and tired of the bad actors that are pretending to be anti-war, that are pretending to be anti-war. And, and oh, we, we can't help Ukraine because I love peace. And it's it's so disingenuous. Um, it was a Slavo Zizek thing. Okay, I guess. Okay, now we got to watch it. Okay. But you know, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play this next time. You guys are all sleeping in the chat. This is what you're gonna get next time. Uh, volume warning. This is the Muscova, the pride of the Russian Navy, getting sunk. This is the this is the emergency. This is the audio from inside the ship, I guess. Boy, this, you know, they said it was a fire. They said it was a fire that kind of got out of, out of control. This doesn't really sound like a fire to me. All right, just a little bit more of this because I know it's incredible. I'm going to turn it down a little bit too. Uh, Oh, that's some fire, huh? Stop the prope stop the propellers. Draven's lull. I fully agree with you, and I, I'm on the same page. I'm on the same page with you there, Draven's lull. Because yeah, I mean, I'm shocked. I'm and I'm and we're going to be talking about it. I am shocked to see some of the most prominent lefties I used to respect with my whole heart coming out and supporting a Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Here's a great example. Apparently, Slavo Zizek, you know, I don't know. Is he a communist? What the fuck else? I don't know what the fuck he is, right? Who knows? But Slavo Zizek, quite the character. And I guess now he's he's making the, he's doing the old two-step. I love peace. I want peace. I want peace. That's why I think Russia should be able to invade Ukraine. 
We can't push back on Russia because that would cause more deaths. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope that's the case. I really do. I, I want to respect Slavo Zizek. I really do. So let's, let's get into it. Let's get a little Slavo Zizek in our lives. I haven't done a Zizek in a minute. On rejecting the European order, the Ukraine war, and reinventing heroism. Interesting. <laughs> it's true. I'm certain this man owns one shirt. I am certain this man owns one shirt and it's covered in snot. I'm certain of this. What you say. But let's see, let's take a look at Ukrainian war. Mm -hmm. I think it's becoming clearer and clearer that what's really at stake is not simply a piece of land in Ukraine. The only consistent way, and I don't care if it was consciously planned by Putin or whoever, mm -hmm. that's the tendency now, and they're making it more and more explicit, is uh, obviously it's a struggle for a new global geopolitical Absolutely. order without Europe and its legacy. Mm -hmm. My key, maybe we don't agree, is that European legacy is under threat. Mm. In the sense that it's not, and here I see the big danger. You know that... What is he talking about with European legacy? Is he talking about the old hammer and sickle Soviet days? What the fuck is he talking about? In United States now in the Republican Party, more and more people thought, but this is uh, a, a European war, it doesn't concern us. And also on the ideological level, there are sympathies for, for Putin, for his more conservative version and so I on. I think like it's sympathy for violence. I think wha one of the things that this war does, mm -hmm. I mean, it, you see, I also see it in Israel that there are some people who instinctively support Putin for no other reason, they simply admire a bully. They just, they like violence. I mean, this is something that we haven't seen in a long time, in, yeah. in, 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 in for decades in history. I'm sorry, their mics are mixed wildly differently. This guy is as quiet as a mouse and Slavo Zizek is full volume. I'm sorry. I think a key distinction, I think a key ideological yes. distinction is your attitude to violence. In the, early 20, in the early 20th century, both on the right and on the left, you had a very strong support. Simply, violence is good. Also among the Bolsheviks, as well as among the Nazis, there was simply admiration of violence. The way to, it's not, the aim is not important. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. key is how you do it and the admire of violence. And you see this mutual admiration that Mussolini admires Lenin and Stalin admires Stalin. This is a man who knows how to do stuff. And at the center of the, there is this admiration of violence and we haven't seen it for a long time and suddenly it, it re-emerges. If there is something important ideological mm -hmm. that is happening right now, mm -hmm. I would say it's the re-emergence of this admiration, simply admiring a bully and how a bully functions. It's, this is how you shape history. Okay, I agree with you, but I would here go maybe even a step further and say uh, it's... Uh, we, especially in the Western Europe, where, as Habermas, Jürgen Habermas, with whom I often don't agree, put it nicely, in the last decades, we left in, we were living in some kind of a false safety balloon protected by United States nuclear power, and we thought, as Habermas put it, the heroic times are over. Mm -hmm. And I would be, maybe, at some sense, even more, uh, pessimist than you because I think it's not just violence as such, it's something almost more horrible. It's the idea that only in a violent situation where you have to risk it all and so on, you are authentically human. Hmm. It's this, and I worry what? about this very much, it's this new idea that that this uh, relatively satisfactory. It's not new. Uh, authoritarians have have been, you know, saying that you know war and conflict make you know society strong and give people an identity for time immemorial. I don't know if it's new. Story, uh, consumerist, hedonist, peaceful life. 
that there is something not authentic about it. And now comes my problematic part. Mm -hmm. I think that in some sense, not in the sense of military violence, these guys are, I dare not to use the word right, but in the sense that this peaceful era without conflict is over. The yes. problem mm -hmm. for us now is how to reinvent heroism, but not that type of heroism. For example, isn't okay. it obvious that with four riders of the of Copalip, apocalypse, global warming and all that, we will in some sense need a new form of, I'm not afraid to use the term, global mobilization. Interesting. Wow. Okay. And Slavo Zizek, I mean, I shouldn't be surprised that, you know, his, his uh, he has something very interesting to say. So I, he, he, I, 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 if I'm interpreting this correctly, I think he is, he is defending Ukraine's right to defend itself. And he's saying we've entered a new era of, you know, you know, call it what you want, like Cold War 2.0 or, you know, World War Three or whatever you want, but we've entered a new era and we need to redefine what a hero is in terms of like, you know, is, is what Ukraine is doing, you know, defensible? Is this ultra, is this, you know, is this something, you know, is this something heroic defending your land from an invader? And, you know, and even if you're taking the help of the United States, even though you're allowing yourself to become a tool, a geopolitical tool of the United States empire, you know, are you still heroic? I think, I think that's what he's talking about. Uh, Woke Patriot posted more in the Discord, huh? Proof that allowed uh, the enhanced video of the Rittenhouse trial. Oh, that's that's from Davey. Oh, the dark side of neutrality by Slavo Zizek. Okay, well, they got a, <laughs> the picture. They got Roger Waters on the fucking screen. Dismantles the justification by Western pacifists and non-aligned countries for wow, interesting, great. Yeah, no, check out this article by Woke Patriot. Posted this in the Discord. Hi there, Vidor. Welcome back from Brazil. It's good to see you. Um, thank you, Kemp Goblin, for pointing that out. So, yeah, wow. Um, leave it to Slavo Zizek to, um, to impress me. To impress me. No one gives a shit what you think. Man, what the fuck are you still doing here? All right, moving on to the next story. Um, wanted to, you know, the other thing that the, uh, the bad actor communist that we had in the chat yesterday or last time was saying is that, oh, Ukraine's corrupt, Ukraine's corrupt, you know, why, why are we helping Ukraine? There's a corrupt puppet government and all that stuff. And, you know, here's the thing. Yeah, when you're a vassal of Russia and all Russia wants you to be is this, you know, fastigial element that doesn't do better than Russia, you know, it's like, okay, you can do all, you can make our weapons, you can be our factories, you can make our tanks. But, you know, you can't you you can't you can't join the, the Western Alliance and be a better country than us. We can't have a flourishing democracy next to the, you know, the embarrassing government of, of Moscow. Um, it's, it's pretty, pretty hard not to be corrupt. It's pretty hard to not have a corrupt government in that situation as a vassal to Russia to see Ukraine step up and take the initiative on corruption even during in in uh, uh uh during the invasion in the year of the invasion they were you'll see in this you'll see in this uh, uh piece here ukraine was able to convict you know several corrupt officials you know even while they were being invaded um we're seeing initiatives from zelensky we're seeing you know we're seeing high high up politicians getting called out and arrested for their corruption um i think it's a start it's a start. It's a positive. What I'm not, I'm not seeing them just ignoring the problem completely. Like at the very least, if you say you want to be totally cynical about this effort coming from Ukraine and Zelensky and the Ukrainian government, you could just say, oh, they're just, they're just pretending so that they could join the European Union. As soon as they join the European Union, they're just going to go right back to their old ways. That's a pretty cynical point of view. I don't agree with it. Uh, but even then you have to acknowledge, okay, they're pretending. Right, they're at the very least they're pretending to give a shit about corruption. And look, folks, the bar is low. The bar is low. There are Western countries that don't even like Turkey. Right, they don't even like. We're not corrupt. We don't. We're not corrupt at all. What are you talking about? Everything's running smooth. Everything's running smooth over here. Right. 
So at the very least, they're like, okay, we're pretending to address our corruption, which I don't think is the case. I think they're legitimate. I think Zelensky sees the corruption as a major hurdle into getting Ukraine into the into the uh, into the UN, to the uh, EU. I mean, uh, wait, no, into the. Oh my god, I'm, I'm I'm just total brain fart here. Fucking EU, European Union, no. United Nations into the UN. Jesus Christ. Um, getting the EU and the UN mixed up. But no, I think Zelensky sees the corruption as a major hurdle into getting into the UN and, you know, into becoming part of the, the Western alliance and solidifying joining NATO and and he I think he sees the corruption as a hurdle to that and that's why he's going after it. Yeah. And, you know, and Kem Goblin, as a, a Kem Goblin is a citizen of Ukraine, and I've never seen a person more upfront about their government's corruption. So it's like, it's not a gotcha. It's, you're not, you're not, um, it's the EU. God damn it. God damn it. The Kyle Rittenhouse thing fucking flew me off. Okay. I'm way off base here. I got to get back on track. Um, the EU, thank you. European Union, NATO. NATO is, I think, what I was trying to talk about. But regardless, right? I think Zelensky sees the corruption as a hurdle into integrating Ukraine into these organizations. That's what I was trying to say. Um, and it's not a gotcha to Ukrainians. Say, oh, your country corrupt. Yeah, we know. We're, 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 you know, we got Zelensky and we're fighting against Russia. We're trying to change our country. We're trying to change our fate. And this crackdown on corruption, while not perfect, is there a perfect one, right? It's not perfect, but it's something, and it's very encouraging. We, if we see more and more of this, it's, it's, it's fast-tracked to NATO land, right? So let's see more of this. I want to see more of this. And, hey, while we're at it, how about we get a couple of the, you know, once you're done fixing your corruption in your own country, Zelensky, why don't you come on by the United States? Oh, boy. I have a little conversation with Dianne Feinstein, right? UN, there's, yeah, UN, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm getting my, I'm getting everything mixed up here, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, you, you deserve better from me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Get the UN and EU mixed up. Ukraine is in the second year of its fight against Russia's invasion. But there's another war Ukraine has been fighting for much longer. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, Ukraine has been struggling with an internal enemy, corruption. This year, the country has seen several high-profile investigations. In the latest, the chair of the Supreme Court was arrested for allegedly taking a $2.7 million dollar bribe. And corruption at all levels has huge implications for Ukraine's future. If uh, we do have problems with corruption, it will directly affect our uh, military efforts. Before the war, that was the main concern of Ukrainians. Ukraine is uh, the most open and transparent corrupt country in the world. Ukrainian people have long been demanding anti-corruption measures and stamping out graft is a key demand for the EU if Ukraine is ever to achieve its aim of joining the bloc. So is Ukraine winning its fight against corruption? To understand Man, what's the excuse for Palestine? Not if we're we're gonna let we're gonna let there's some we, we got some is Somalia in the UN? Somalia's in the UN, but not Palestine. That's fucked up. Then the problem we need to look back at Ukraine's history. It used to be part of the Soviet Union until the states signed an agreement <laughs> That's dissolving a joke. the communist state in 1991. That's a fucking joke. The ensuing chaotic transition to a free market system provided fertile ground for corruption. Officials who had made it into positions of power were stealing money and selling public property all over the country and especially in the East. Over the following so years, wild. corruption became a part of everyday life. In 2014, when and look, look, this is this is Russia. I don't mean to be like a Russia file or Russia phobic or whatever, but this is if study some history, study some you know Russian history. This this is how this is this is exactly how the Russians are corrupt. Huge protests swept Ukraine, ultimately toppling the government. One of the protesters' major demands was for the future government to fight corruption. 
before the war that was by the way astro warrior i totally agree hamas is uh you know they're basically terrorists but it's also the democratically elected government of palestine so deal with it the main concern of ukrainians probably something that would have brought most of the afghanistan's to... in, dude afghanistan the motherfucking taliban invited to the un we can't get palestine in there huh we can't get pal oh no 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 taliban that's cool i mean they're terrorists and all but you know afghanistan that's legit not palestine though that's not even a real country shit that won't exist in a couple years to whatever's happening in the government pledges to fight corruption helped sweep vladimir zelensky to power in 2019 he had even starred in a political comedy show about a teacher speaking out against corruption and becoming president before fiction became this realistic. This is a funny ass show. So it's a good show. So how are those pledges going? Right now, there are two main ingredients Ukraine is using to fight corruption. The first is punishing the perpetrators. Ukraine has its own anti-corruption agency, which investigates high profile cases and it tries to get them in front of a court. It's responsible for most high-profile investigations, including the ones we showed you at the beginning. During the last year, even though we had a full-fledged uh, invasion uh, happening, uh, the, for example, High Anti-Corruption Court of Ukraine managed to still work and produce uh, over 30 verdicts. Look at that. So, I mean, they were like right in the midst of being invaded, you know, probably a couple months after the invasion, once things stabilized a little bit. They're, they're right back at it, throwing 30 verdicts. I mean, that's something. That's something. And we talk about high officials here. In order to punish perpetrators effectively, the justice system itself must be free of corruption. Ukraine has made efforts to remove corrupt judges and drafted in foreign experts to help oversee the appointment of new ones, mostly via the High Council of Justice. Right now, we've been selecting the people who would be selecting the judges, because the problem there is, you know, in order to have the trust in the final selection, you have to trust people who select them. Um, so, yeah, we, we're going at length to ensure that the people who are making those decisions are trusted by the society. Getting Support. independent judges in place is also a contested issue at Ukraine's constitutional court. The EU expects Ukraine to reform the court before it can join. EU. But proposed yeah. changes to the court are controversial. EU. Not the UN. Now the political the authorities, EU. they control Jesus. five ju they, you know, control Jesus. five judges of the constitutional court and there are still more, more still five oh. more vacancies. I'm losing it. I'm uh, fucking so losing what it. What they try to do is um, they try to, mm, you know, um, make it in a way that they will be able to put another five politically loyal. I, I kind of agree with the, you know, suspending elections until the war is over. Kind of. It, it worked for America, you know. It worked for FDR. Right, FDR, World War II. I'm not wrong about that one, am I? Oh my God, I'm such an idiot. Well, judges of the constitutional court. FDR, the constitutional right? court being totally, uh, totally controlled because there are only 18 judges in the constitutional court, so they will control 10. Observers say this represents a huge setback, especially as the constitutional court will be very influential after the war with Russia, when Ukraine needs to reorder itself. The other main tactic to reduce corruption is reducing opportunities for corruption. That usually means aiming for... Were elections suspended in World War II? Or, or did FDR just, he just won the election. There was an election in World War II for a new president. There was, wasn't there? Transparency throughout the economic system. Yeah, Kem Goblin, what do you Ukraine think? Ukraine has made headway here in recent years. There is a transparent, uh, you know, uh, digital system. Lincoln, was it Lincoln that did martial law? One of the U.S. presidents did martial law and it made perfect sense. Was it Lincoln? Them where everybody can check what projects are financed, who does those projects, have the pictures and videos of how the process is ongoing, etc., etc., etc. So I think what what is good about Ukraine is that we are an advanced IT country, and you know IT um, IT solutions can you know make the space for corruption much smaller because you can have a lot of information available for people to look at, available for analysis by the IT tools, available, you know, for you to see and watch and control. Love that. He's talking With about, no, he's no. not talking about citizens. He's talking about politicians. He's talking about judges. He's talking about elected officials, right? That's the, I'm, spy away, spy, full transparency, please.
I, I want everything on record. Not only investigators, but all citizens, having access to data showing who owns what asset, or who gets which government contract, corruption is much easier to detect. Really, never. This website, for example, That's shows fascinating. how government contracts are awarded to companies. I think then, I, I okay, if the U.S. never did it throughout all of its, I don't, yeah, I think elections should happen. I think Zelensky would have no problem winning, right? Um, yeah, I think there should be elections. Yeah, we got to have a record for coups, attempted coups against other countries, sure. Um, that's interesting. You got me there. I have no idea. I would like to have an election, but it's one of the things Russia could take advantage of. Yeah, totally. Totally. At the same time, Zelensky ain't losing that election. Motherfucker, stone cold winning that. Man, he's going to strut. She's going to strut. You know? Um, but I think a, an argument could be made that it's quite a distraction and a, a president who's trying to win a war. Should we burden that guy with a, a, a trying to win an election? That's a, that is a tough one. I oof. America. Well, that's not quite true. We were invaded by the British. Was, has America ever truly been in a situation like Ukraine is with Russia? You know, has America ever really faced its total annihilation from an invading army coming into the soil? Has that ever really truly happened in America? I feel like, you know, that's that's a toughie because I do feel like an election would be a massive distraction right when Zelensky needs is needed the most to fight the war. Um, yeah, it could be online voting. Yeah. The online voting could be easily rigged. Like, maybe not easily. I don't know. A lot, of, a lot of different caveats. That's a good question. Martial law or no in, in Ukraine, right? Should, or suspend, not martial law, but suspend elections. Suspend elections. Oh, thank you for that link, Davey. That's an interesting question. With amounts and company names clearly visible. Ukraine is uh, the most open and Another transparent great point, Davey. country yeah. in the world. We have uh, democracy. We have uh, lots of uh, investigative uh, journalism and so on and so forth, uh, anti, very strong anti-corruption NGOs. Whenever something happens, uh, the people uh, get aware. So all these headlines about Ukrainian corruption might actually be a good thing, because corruption is actually being spotted and publicly discussed. Polls show Ukrainians want the fight against corruption to continue even during the war. In fact, it might be too late after the war ends. Totally. The whole war situation and security every penny. make it harder to do any sensible reform. Uh, but I think uh, there is still understanding that we cannot wait until the end of the war. We don't know how long will it last. The Ukrainian government is also trying to ready the country for EU membership. And most of the EU's demands for reform are also oh geared towards What's minimizing happening corruption. In Haiti? Many Ukrainians welcome this additional pressure on the I U think I covered Haiti last show, but it wasn't a long segment. Ukrainian government. Oh, we Ukrainians don't trust our government. We, you know, we like to control our government. We like to argue. We like to challenge the government. I mean, this is not a question of, you know, we love our government and let them do what they want. Uh, I think it's the constant um, situation of the civil society asking questions and trying to get the right answer. T Try to tell me this isn't a fucking democracy, you fucking bad actors uh, in the world out here trying to say that this is some puppet government installed by the United States. Fuck you. This is a democracy. This is a democracy that desperately wants to be freed from the chains of authoritarianism. While Ukrainian soldiers are trying to push back Russian forces in the east, reforming the justice system might seem like a fringe concern. Some worry that highlighting corruption could play into Russia's hands to depict Ukraine as an undemocratic country. Just but experts coup, also right. say waiting to reform the country after the war is not an option. I'm worried about it because um, during the war and immediately after the war, the authorities concentrate the power, sure. which is like obvious. However, after the war, it would be the courts uh, and the constitutional court uh, that would be the um, I would say the main player in this check and balance system. Important steps in reforming Ukraine's justice system are expected this year, when new judges will take their place in the court system, from the local courts up 
to the constitutional court. Whoa, that's huge. That's huge. Is that is that normal? Is that just part of the normal election cycle? Is you know every so often the judges are replaced? We need to preserve All right, the buddy. values in the country, uh, the level of transparency, and um, all other issues that we want to strive to as a European nation. And for that to be true, to get to the victory day um, as uh, Yeah, Astro Warrior, yes, that's the problem. Israel doesn't want to admit that Palestine has a right to exist. Yeah, that's, that's a big problem. As strong as is it possible, we need to obviously uh, address any issues related to corruption uh, and understand that uh, victory is not only a victory on the battlefield for Ukraine. Love to see it. More of it. It needs to happen. And hey, let's take some lessons from Ukraine and let's do uh, let's let's go after some of these corrupt judges in our own country. Um. Moving on, just want I just wanted to show that clip, you know, because I just wanted to rebut these this gotcha response of oh Ukraine's corrupt and so you know why should we help them? It's like it, man, you know, you're you just because you're not you're not being nuanced in your argument. That doesn't mean that. That's the argument we're all going to go with here. Ukrainian anti-corruption bodies said that they exposed large-scale corruption in the Supreme Court. Local media reported that the president of the court was arrested. So just, just another evidence of, you know, we're going after corruption. You know, the, the moment they were freed from the, you know, from the jaws of, of, of Russia, you know, and started breaking out independently, it looks like they started going after the corruption. Um, love to see it. Love to see it. They, they probably have a long way to go, though. Um, God, these people are gross. I, you know, I don't have time to go through every one of these, uh, links here, but I did want to take the opportunity to show you them. Um, Code Pink and unfortunately Noam Chomsky are basically making the, you know, uh, anti, you know, it, everything America does is bad. So America helping Ukraine defend itself is bad. Um, if you want peace, you should encourage Zelensky to give, uh, you know, to stop helping Zelensky militarily, of course, and then, of course, uh, encourage Zelensky to give uh, the Donbass, uh, you know, her son, and, of course, Crimea, just accept that that's part of Russia. You know, basically just let the bully win. Um, you know, Chomsky makes m a more nuanced argument that basically leads down that path. It's not exactly his argument. Um, but Medea Benjamin sucks. Medea Benjamin does has I have never I have seen I have seen too many interviews with Medea Benjamin since the start of this Ukrainian war. And she never once addresses, and, and quite frankly, Amy Goodman never asks her, okay, okay, so say magically we get what you want, Medea, and we 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 stop helping Ukraine. We no more weapons, no more money, no nothing, and we and the only thing that we do is we start pressuring, um, we start pressuring Russia to talk. You know, the United States uses all of its diplomatic ability, all of its chutzpah. Okay, we've left Ukraine. Ukraine is all alone. Ukraine. Okay, they're totally vulnerable. Okay, now let's have a talk about peace. Medea, what happens when Putin says, okay, thanks, and invades the rest of the country? Oh, that never happened. Putin's an honest actor. Russia's an honest actor. They're rational. They're rational. They would never take all of Ukraine. They would, they would, they would start talking because they want peace. Russia wants peace. She, ne she never has to even say that. She never has to say it. She's never pushed on this, on this argument. Uh, let's just stop helping Ukraine. War bad. War is bad. Defending yourself bad. And let's start the negotiations with a bad actor that doesn't want to have negotiation. Oh, but Putin does. Putin does. It's the United States, according to Aaron Mate in, in the gray zone. Oh, it's the United States that's pushing war. They're, they're pushing war. Putin wants peace. Putin agreed to talks. Putin agreed to this. Putin agreed to that. Right, and that these these same people will use the referendum. Remember that referendum we saw, right? Oh yeah, Ukrainian citizens want to want you know want the Dunbas to join Russia. Look at all these people who voted at gunpoint 
they they point to these referendums oh as proof oh proof you see ukrainian people want to be invaded the ukrainian people want to be liberated from the from the american puppet government of ukraine stop with this these i i can't think of a more disgusting defense of war than peace you know than using peace oh we just have to let him win i'm so peaceful that i think i think my enemies should just be able to dominate me okay putin putin is not waiting in the wings putin is not waiting for a phone call from uncle sam to stop the madness and useful idiots like Medea Benjamin are out here making this argument. So if you want all the proof, here it is. I'm not going to waste time going through all these evidence after evidence after evidence, bad faith argument after bad faith, bad faith argument, interview after interview on the real news network, by the way, fucking fall from grace, fall from grace over here. Link after link, a point, you know, you, you, it's it's clear and then a yes noam chomsky with uh you know the epstein situation that's a whole other layer of shit but here's here's noam chomsky on fucking russell brand another bad actor who doesn't understand the situation i just want peace i just want peace that's why russia should win so if you if you want this information here it is i'm not gonna waste my time going through it if you want to waste your time you're welcome to but stop stop listening left the left needs to stop taking these people seriously and i'm sorry about noam chomsky i really am i fucking love this guy i have like six noam chomsky books in my library okay i love noam chomsky manufacturing consent brilliant genius we gotta let him go okay we the the left needs to stop being nostalgic okay and we we need to we need thought leaders that we can trust that makes sense that don't have some shady ass past you know some shady ass past defending other genocides and all this other bullshit with noam chomsky right his his brilliance oof, his brilliance does not change the fact that he's wrong about ukraine and like i don't know what his motivations are i don't know why i don't fucking care He's making the defeatist argument of, well, you know, it used to be part of Russia. They want to be Russians. It's more nuanced, though. Noam Chomsky could fill a book with his reasons, right? More nuanced than Medea Benjamin, that's for sure. Just wanted to show you this. This is a little piece of good news. I thought this was cute. Um, you know, some Ukrainian soldier, I guess he's a little bored or something. Took a bunch of shell casings here and uh, made a little art project. That's cool. I, you know, I, um, I, I, only because I avoid you know honoring national symbols of any kind. I, I wouldn't hang this up in my house. But I don't hang up American flags. I don't hang up Canadian flags. Uh, I don't believe in nationalism. But with that said, I would. I'd be really tempted because this is really cool, right? This is really cool. Look, he's got all these bullet casings. He's pounding them into the wood. He's got this thing, this little, you know, slice of wood right here. Pretty cool. If I saw this in someone's house, I'd be like, that's pretty cool. Really creative stuff, man. Look at that. Some shell casings and some wood and a and a hatchet and a hatchet. And he's got this really cool. And this is really well done, too. Look how neat that is. That's really neat. It's not like sloppy at all, man. That's really cool. I guess New Mexico should submit to the United States because we once occupied. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the excuses are fucking ridiculous. It's the same shit we're seeing with Israel, right? Oh, well, like a million years ago, this was this was Israeli land, right? Before the Palestinians kicked us out, like a thousand years ago, right? It's like, you know, is, is Mongolia going to start invading the world, right? You know what I mean? This was Genghis Khan land, bitch! Or was is it G Genghis? Genghis? How do they say? They can't say, it's not Genghis, it's Gungus or Jungus or something. It's, it sounds nothing like what we've been saying it as. Genghis? Is it Genghis Khan? Is that how you say it? Um... 
don't worry folks no dead bodies this footage is intense but no dead bodies justice <laughs> justice for neanderthals <laughs> The whole world is Britain. I mean, it just, the you know, what's the logical conclusion of it? Honestly, right? Is Africa going to invade the rest of the fucking world? Oh, you were all part of me at one point, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, you were a proud African until you separated from my continent. We're going to invade and take you back. Stop the fucking madness. And, and stop pretending like an Aaron Mate or a Medea Benjamin are coming at you from an honest perspective because they're quiet and they're just, oh, we just want peace. Oh, oh. A bad argument from a quiet, bad actor is still a bad fucking argument. I just want peace. And I used to love Code Pink, man. I was 100% behind Code Pink during the Iraq war, the Afghanistan war, you know, like, Man, like, why did why would you flush this? Why would you flush all of the amazing work that you've done with this odd, lack of nuance, total bullshit? Like, you know, like, come on, we're not we're not going to have any. Oh, just it's bad. It's bad. It's bad because the U.S. is involved. You're a fucking moron. You're a short-sighted moron, right? Come on, man. Well, the world is more complicated than that. Yes, of course, the United States is not altruistic in its action, but come on, man. This shit is. Come on, man. Guys, can I ban this person? All right. Yes or no? Can I ban this person, please? You're, yeah, Davey, that's, that's why I'm not doing it. You're, god damn it. Fuck. Ah! Can't I just be a tyrant? Everyone else gets to be a tyrant. I want to be a tyrant. Ooh. Not fair. So we're on our way to a new set of Ukrainian positions, which you'll understand are only about 200 meters from the Russian front lines. We're moving as quickly as we can. And the back of an armored Humvee. They're flying, dude. They're moving, moving. And then the last bit of the journey will be <laughs> they fucking go and, and look at the weather. Look how everything's dried out. Oh, Putin. Oh, boy, Putin. Oh. <laughs> And we're gonna move from Boy, here. Zelensky is fucking dick teasing us with this uh, uh, this offensive, right? Now he's like, mm, maybe I'll wait for those fighter jets, which makes perfect sense because if yes, man, if you could like, that's the big weakness that the Ukrainian military has is that they don't have control of the skies. Wait for the F-16s. But man, are you really gonna wait four more months? It's gonna take at least three to four months to train all the pilots, right? So sure, you got 70 planes sitting there, but you need pilots to pilot it. Ooh, this is intense, man. Do you wait? Do you? I guess you just wait, huh? You wait. He Zelensky does have time on his hands. He, he there's, you know, the the longer this stretches out, the more Russia stumbles and falls and loses, you know, five to one troops and five to one, uh, you know, armor and and uh, supplies. So the, the, the time is on Zelensky's side. Time is on Zelensky's side. The, the Western alliance isn't faltering because they're not, because Ukraine isn't posting a bunch of videos of them beheading a bunch of Russians. So, you know, Germany and France are staying quiet. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe just waiting for these planes is the right move. But God damn, you were killing me, Zelensky. To the old Russian position. <laughs> The new Ukrainian positions that they've now You're taken. You're killing me. Don't repeat that, Sidil. Where you see a little greenery in front of you, there was Russians before. So it was our positions, and there was Russians. I think he's talking about like right here. About 15 meters from here. So this is a firing position meters. from the old Ukrainian front line. And that's a stench. It's pretty unpleasant, and that's because. I don't, I don't know about held accountable, but I think in the realm of, dip, of diplomacy, uh, Turkey's actions should be remembered. But I also need, like, if Turkey's, if Erdogan is replaced, 
how much of that was Erdogan versus you know the people of Turkey or the government of Turkey, right? I look out here from where this where this position would have looked onto no man's land and barbed wire. There is in front of me the rotting remains of a dead Russian soldier. Right in front of the trench. All along this trench, this tree line. And they haven't come by to pick him up. Me, the old Russian position, and down here, evidence of what the soldiers left behind. These are the remains of the old Russian positions that at their closest were just 40 meters away from the Ukrainian front line and walking through this devastation, it's really easy to see that comparisons with World War One sort of trench warfare really okay, were, you know, no exaggeration. Okay, all right, all right, all right. He's backing it. He's saying, "Look, it's not exaggeration." All right, but can we get away from the World War One trench comparisons? I, I swear to God, every single one of them is like, "Dude, this is just like World War One." Yes, we know. Trenches. And in this position, they've told us that we can poke our head above the parapets to try and see what's out there. But if we want to. It's for 20 seconds at a time maximum because of the risk of snipers. Because you catch a bullet, dude. Fire. <laughs> the camera guy just holding the camera up 20 seconds. Uh, yep. yep, that's a field. Yep, okay. And what's that? What are the explosions? <laughs> the explosions? Yeah, chem goblin. To absolutely ridiculous arguments, right? Totally. So while we've been here, there's been a fairly constant thunder of uh, artillery. And uh, we understand there's a Russian yeah. gun. About Look, I, any country that wants to join any organization should have the right to do so, whether you agree with that organization or not. There's plenty of criticism of NATO, but, uh, you know, I, I have a hard time shitting on NATO anymore after they were 100% right about Russia. You know, and it's like, how do I how do I tell another country? Yeah, don't don't get all that protection from this illegal invasion, right? Don't don't do that. It's I got nothing, man. I got nothing. So, yeah, I think any country should be able to join any organization that it wants. And like if you don't like that organization, you don't, you know, and I mean, it's a little different when that organization is invading you. Is is like attacking you. And NATO NATO that's not the case with NATO, but NATO's also, you know, they bring weapons. They bring, oh God, it's complicated. God, it's, it's, it's like, why, 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 why even bother? Why even bother trying to fucking push back on NATO anymore? Fuck, just fuck it, just fuck it. NAFO, I'm NAFO now. I'm gonna, I'm the NAFO guy. NAFO, great. Fucking military industrial complex. In the United States is awesome. We're, we're kicking butt. We're kicking America. Fuck yeah, NAFO baby. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. It's so hard to criticize this shit now. God damn it. Fuck you, Putin. Used to used to be a really solid argument against NATO. Used to be a really solid argument against NATO. It's fucking nuked because of fucking Putin. Meters away, ah. it's shooting over our heads. So it's America, our baby. Head, it's going over our position. They uh, can uh, look at this. This is this motherfucker's on this storm in these trenches. Look at this get up, dude. This is right out of Warzone, like right the the fucking video game, right? But this this is the guy that's like tip of the spear entering the trench man this guy's kidded use uh, artillery here and grad artillery they are, they are set because we are, took back our place and uh, they shelling every every day and many times per day and before i remember you said it was like world war one in trenches and now does it still feel like world war one yeah, more than uh, before so this is the position as close as we can get to the Russian lines. This is the last, this is the front line for Ukrainian troops. Hey, props to this guy. Doug. Hey, props to this guy, okay? This ain't some guy hanging out the balcony of, his, you know, this isn't MSNBC or, you know, Morning Joe hanging out the balcony of your hotel, putting on a, a super clean helmet and, and press vest, you know, bulletproof vest. Oh, I'm on the reporting from the front lines of Ukraine in a, in a, Kiev hotel, in a hotel in Kiev. No, this guy's on the front lines. This is this is real journalism right here. Three days ago, these trenches, they took over what was just a couple of foxholes that the Russians had abandoned. And now they're facing off against the Russian soldiers from about 150 to 200 meters away. Wow. Crazy. Crazy, dude. Look at that shit. Look at that shit, man. How, how can you be caught ass out like that? Look at the, what are you doing? What is, what is happening? You, you just, 
you got no 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 troop transport no, no just just run just run like a scared coward to the next position and hopefully you'll make it i can't believe russia you know puts their people in a position like this puts their soldiers in a position like this where's the backup where's the where's the structure to this you know okay okay they're storming hey i'm sure they're telling them on the radio ukrainian storming our position we you know we're going to we're going to need help and we're going to need an evac we're going to need help we got to get out of here yeah good luck we're drinking vodka. See you when you get here. <laughs> Lost their vehicle in a mine. Sure, sure. But I mean, even it's just like, man, good luck. Fuck, good luck, you know? So I'm sure that we're going to see bad actors talking about this and, of course, misconstruing it. I don't think I disagree um, with what's happening here. So let me explain. This is a quote from the Ukrainian intel chief. Outright scum will be punished. Admits assassinating... Uh, the Ukrainian in intel chief admits to assassinating Russian propagandists. Um, and then making them front line and then tried to run away. They killed him. I, that wouldn't surprise me. It really wouldn't. Admits assassinating Russian propaganda propagandists. I don't know. I don't know if I agree. I, I think I'm going to take that back. I don't know if I agree with this. Assassinating propagandists. Oh uh, yeah. I don't think it's it's okay. Big difference here. Big big difference between. Defending assassinate a, 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 a policy of assassination during peacetime and supporting a policy of assassination during wartime, right? It, that does make things different. The people mentioned in the article led combat units. Okay, so we're talking about soldiers. We're talking about soldiers. That changes things too. Let's get into it. Let's let's get into this a little bit and let's see where we stand on this. They're an active belligerent. Russia has it coming. That's a slippery slope, dude. That's a real slippery slope. Justice needs to prevail. The head of Ukraine's military intelligence has admitted Kyiv is behind the assassinations of prominent Russian propagandists. Did they do the statue? Did did they do the statue on that guy? Oh, bro, you are stone cold. This homie stone cold. He did this. He did the statue, didn't he? He did the statue. Fuck. Major General Kai Kyrilio Bundyanov said, "Quote: We've already successfully targeted quite a few people." Facts. Pardon Assange. Assange needs to be pardoned. Yeah, I mean, and and, and the facts show that he's innocent. You, of course, Ukraine did the statue. Yeah. There have been well publicized cases everyone knows about thanks to the media coverage. So he's not telling, he's not saying exactly. Boy, he wants to say he did the statue. For some reason, even though it's Ukrainian media, I think they don't mention that. Oh. Although Bundanov did not specify exactly which individuals have been targeted since the launch of Russia's full scale invasion last year, several prominent pro Kremlin figures have been killed or wounded on Russian territory. Earlier this month, an explosion on. Niz Nizhny Novgorod region injured Zakhar Preplin, a pro Kremlin writer and one of Russia's best known novelists. In April, an explosion at the cafe in Russia's second largest city of St. Petersburg killed prominent pro Kremlin military blogger Valden Tartarsky and injured 25 others. <sighs> oh man, look, I mean, that was a pretty fucking clean, you know. The, f the fact that that statue only killed their target and only and injured everyone else, pretty fucking crazy. Pretty almost unbelievable. Um, Ukraine also killed, yeah, that's right, the daughter of Duga, right? Yeah, I agree. So does Bobby Jr. and Williamson. Ugh. I mean, okay, just because, okay, wrong people can be right about certain things, all right? That doesn't make that thing that they're right about wrong. Um, you know, just because 
RFK and Marion Williamson agree that Assange should be freed, that doesn't that doesn't make it um, any more any less any less true. I want them to still debate Biden and bring it up. Not gonna lie. No, I would. I totally would support that. Yeah, you know. I mean, I used to really like Williamson, Marianne Williamson. I, you know, but and and I, I never really liked the uh, Kennedy, the whatever his fucking name is. Uh, uh, but um, Marianne Williamson. Okay, my problem is that she goes on right wing, um, right wing talking show talk shows and doesn't call them out on their right-wing bullshit. Okay, I've I've seen several interviews of her with prominent right-wingers, and it's like, okay, yeah, we're trying to, you know, we're just trying to spread our message and talk about progressivism and, you know, Marianne Williamson-style politics. But you got you to call them out. You got to be like, hey, sexist, hey, bigot, you know, I don't agree with you. But she doesn't. She doesn't call any of these guys out. <sighs> Yeah, well, people all say that about Marianne Williamson, and, like, that's bullshit. What isn't bullshit is that, like I said, she's not calling these right-wingers out when she's talking to them, and that's, to me, that's a big red flag. That's like, I don't I don't care what kind of attention I'm getting as long as I'm getting attention, right? That bothers me. But uh, uh, the, it's like, the, oh, she's a woo-woo crystal hippie. Like, I, I don't, okay, I don't know. She has some... She, there's some pretty good policies there that she's proposing, some pretty good ideas, but I I don't I don't know if it goes anywhere. It kind of feels like it's a it's like a attention celebrity kind of thing, and that's a shame. Anyway, let's finish this article up. Um in April, yeah, in an in, and in August last year, a car carrying uh Daria Dugina, the daughter of Putin's ideologue Alexander Dugin, was blown up in the suburbs of Moscow. She died in the attack. Um, she was no, I'm not, I'm not excusing assassination, but I, I would just like to point out that she was very, very pro, uh, war in Russia. She was totally behind Russia's invasion of Ukraine. That doesn't give it an, an excuse. I just thought I'd point that out though. In another interview on Tuesday, Budyanov said out quote, outright scum will eventually be punished in any country in the world. Only elimination can be a well-deserved punishment for such actions. No. No. It's one thing if you're a soldier shooting a gun, killing people, you know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. That's one thing. Assassinating civilians that are saying things that you don't like, regardless of how wrong or right you are and how wrong and right they are, no. That is not a policy of a democratic country that's not the and oh don't give me that oh america does it yeah america is wrong when it does this america is wrong when it fucking blows somebody up like when trump blew that blew that person from iran up right for israel that is wrong so don't give me that what about argument with with that said i don't i don't think this is going to hurt Ukraine's alliance, right? Probably because of America. Because it's like, well, America does it, right? Oh. Uh, quote, I don't consider anything else. It is my personal opinion. I stick to it and I will implement it. No. That doesn't... Th does that sound like uh, justice to you? Does that sound like, you know, a person getting their day in court and, you know, getting, you know, arrested for stochastic terrorism or... You know, maybe it's not free. You know, it, free speech does have its limits, right? You know, like that doesn't that doesn't sound like due process to me. That sounds like I don't like you. I don't like what you're saying. I'm going to kill you. Um, you saying that Trump blowing up the Iranian <laughs> Qasem Soleimani? No, so Soleimani wasn't killed by. Was that Soleimani was killed by Saudi Arabia? Wasn't wasn't there? It was crazy. They had a, it was like Breaking Bad. They had a a fucking uh, a, you know a gun in a trunk that was like remote controlled and like assassinated. I think it was someone from Iran, right? Isn't that how it went down? And you know Trump bragged about it. He's like, oh, I got him. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Oh, I'm just I'm just like a real politician. Wow, look at me, right? Something like that. No, Trump drone strike. 
Qasem Soleimani. What, what, what was the one with the motherfucking machine gun in, in, the, in the trunk, Breaking Bad style? You, you got to remember that one, Davey. That was Trump, wasn't it? Yeah, and yeah, the drone strikes from Obama, fill in the blank, right? Uh, Ukraine has previously sought to distance itself from such attacks, rightfully so. After the death of Tatarsky, Ukrainian president aide Mahaiko Pot Potilak suggests the attack was an act of domestic terrorism carried out by Russians opposed to the full-scale invasion of, of Ukraine. He added, it was only a matter of time and like the breakthrough of a ripe abscess. Ew, it's talking about like popping a pimple. It begins in RF. Spiders are eating each other in a jar. I don't, I don't want to see the Ukrainian. I don't want to see any representative of the Ukrainian government saying shit like this. This shit will come back and bite you in the ass. Propagandists will use these words against you to harm Ukraine. These words and these actions. If if anyone from the Ukrainian government happens upon this this video, uh, please let it be known um, that this is not helping Ukraine. It, it, it bragging about and admitting to extrajudicial assassinations, no matter how gross they are. That's not that's not the way, dog. This isn't the way, dog. So I, I have a problem with this. Um, yeah, let me see what Davy's link here is. Iran says smart satellite yes controlled yes yes yeah F right out of a TV show dude like seriously like it, 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 there's like pictures of the aftermath and stuff um let me see if I can find a description of of the weapon here um yeah so check this out no terrorists were present on the ground um uh, uh, martyr Frank Rosarder I'm sorry was driving when a weapon using an advanced camera zoomed in on him uh tasnim a semi-official agency quoted al fadavi the deputy commander of iran's revolutionary guard as saying in a ceremony on sunday the machine gun was placed in a pickup truck and was controlled by a satellite so it wasn't it wasn't the trunk of a car it was the back of a pickup truck um taken from i think too long for stream oh well okay let me put that in the discord though i, I, I would like to listen to that thank you chem goblin for being on top of it thank you so much um what do you, what do you think chem goblin i don't think it's very smart for the ukrainian government to be bragging about assassinations i don't think that's a smart move true or otherwise they should keep their fucking mouth shut i don't think it's a smart move to be bragging about that all right we just got i just thought i'd show you just a couple different angles right so we saw dw's angle um, let's go ahead and get France 24's angle. Um, they they all have reporters on the front lines. Uh, unlike where's like BBC, uh, fucking Scott, you know, Sun. I think that was Sun we watched earlier. Uh, we got France 24, DW, um, and then I have one more. I think uh, maybe that one's from the Sun. Yeah, the Daily Mail, the Daily Mail. They're they're all they're all out there. All these European journalist organizations. They're on the front lines, and then you watch like CNN. And it's literally some guy head to toe body armor on the balcony of his hotel. Oh, hi, I'm right outside or, or outside of his hotel. He's on, on the street, right? He's on the street, full body armor. It's a little embarrassing. Uh, what, what do we, what's the problem? We can't get Anderson Cooper a, a little bit closer to the front lines. Come on, come on. They help boost popular support of the war and they're just as guilty as the generals. I disagree. I disagree, Davey. I think it's I think it's totally fine to arrest somebody for speech that can turn into violence, could be supporting a violence. I do not agree with an extrajudicial assassination of a, of somebody that is saying things I don't agree with. That is a precedent I am not going to support. Is that everything he says is supposed to have some kind of effect and is not his actual opinion? Okay, I mean that's. All right, it still makes Ukraine look really bad. It makes Ukraine look like a cocky, you know, murderer. Oh, I'll just kill you. You're scum. We can't, we can't, Ukraine needs to be better. If Ukraine wants to keep this momentum going, this Western support, I'm sorry, Ukraine needs to keep, needs to have a higher standard.
It just does. That's the burden that Ukraine has right now in, in, in this situation. They have to be better. They have to. Or else you're going to lose that support. He's very blunt about many things. He should probably shut up. I think he should shut up. Time is ticking down. Preparation is underway. These men could soon be launching an assault on Russian defenses. Yeah, you're welcome, Draven Sloan. From the 102nd Brigade of Ukraine's territorial defense, they've seen active combat for over a year, repelling Russian attacks this January on the Zaporizhia front line. Some 5,000 troops here are being sped through ground assault training. Jesus Christ. Holy shit, dude. They were in Pampers five minutes ago. They probably, they probably platinum Valorant. Wow. If Ukraine's counteroffensive comes here in the south, this light infantry brigade will have to breach multiple reinforced lines of defense and trenches. Scary. The entry into the trench was great, and most importantly, you remembered to warn about shrapnel. We're trying to squeeze a two-month training program into two weeks, so we have many groups of men rotating through. Ukraine has recruited 40,000 new troops in recent months. It's a race to get them combat ready. Even these experienced fighters dread breaching newly laid Russian minefields. We know that they've heavily mined their defensive lines and that they're waiting for our counteroffensive. This is what we're most afraid of because mines cause 90% of deaths in reconnaissance units like ours. It's nasty. Nasty shit. And these, the, a lot of these are the mines that they, like Ukraine or Russia has the ability to just mine a whole area with like a, a missile. Like there's a missile that. It's like a cluster bomb, right? It just drops like a hundred mines on a whole area, right? So it's not like they even have to expose themselves and they're putting down discs. They're just dropping these like, you know, cluster munitions everywhere. And despite batches of Western arms deliveries, a Ukrainian offensive would have hardly any cover from aviation. No one has ever fought back against an enemy like this, which has supremacy in the air as well as lots of tanks, artillery, and heavy weapons. This war of attrition has already inflicted large losses on Ukraine's armed forces, although casualty figures are kept a tight secret. Along the 900-kilometer front line, it's estimated that Russian forces outnumber Ukrainian troops by perhaps as many as two or three times. And so the Ukrainian army is counting on training and strategy. You know, and, and this is why you see Ukraine pulling back where, where, where it makes sense. <clears throat> There's just no point in dying because the other side has overwhelming force. They're not trained well. They're not equipped well. But there's just more of them. There's no point in dying because of that. Pull back, you know, re reconfigure yourself, and then keep that pressure up and push back where it's necessary, right? So I, I, Ukraine really has had the right strategy here from the very beginning when it comes to fighting Russia. Pull back where necessary. Always apply pressure. Take advantage of opportunities that are presented. Um, and they've been very successful on the battlefield. And that's why this, you know, two to one, three to one ratio um, you know, isn't isn't the isn't the key factor in why Ukraine is getting its ass kicked, right? It's it's not happening because of you know because of how they're they're very smart about engaging where it makes sense, pulling back where it makes sense. Totally, Draven. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, G seven, uh, the G seven had a meeting and they agreed uh, that you know quote from the G seven starve the Russian war machine. So. Um, I won't get it. I don't have time to get into this, unfortunately. I've been too too long digressing. Um, and I want to get to the good stuff here. We're about to, we're just about on the cusp of getting to the good, good stuff uh, with Ukraine here. But basically what this means is more sanctions. Um, keep them coming. Keep them coming. I don't, I don't like the idea of making the Russian people suffer. Um, but if I, if I have to choose between doing nothing you know killing you know fighting a war dropping bombs and killing people or economic sanctions 
I, I, I pick option three, right? If, if this could all be done with economic sanctions, that's great. But, you know, shout out to Loma tonight. Shout out Loma tonight. Loma? Is that like Ligma? I got a big case of Ligma. Anyone who's committed war crimes or crimes against humanity in Ukraine, including very egregious ones, such as rape, it would be fine, destroyed anywhere in the world. Yeah, I'm, nah, man. I mean, like, okay, that's different. That's different. If you commit terrorism, right, you shoot somebody, you kill somebody, you hurt somebody, right, you're a criminal, right? That's, that's different than being a propagandist. That's different than being a propagandist, right? Weaponizing free speech. Um, won Olympics twice for Ukraine box. Damn. Nice. Um, so yeah, Kim Goblin, either way, that guy needs to stop talking. He needs to stop doing it. If I was Zelensky, I'd be like, you're not doing another interview. Don't, don't respond to emails from press. Say literally nothing. Say literally nothing until I tell you to. That's what I would tell him if I was Zelensky. Cause this, that, that shit can be misinterpreted. I don't, you know, you know, I, no, I, I don't want to give the propagandist any, anything that they could use against me, right? And using my own words against me is a really effective tool. So, all right, so here we go. We got some of this good shit here. Man, um, I, I guess Ukraine has been finding some, some ammo caches um, in some of these places because, folks, these are some, I've, the, these are the biggest explosions I've ever seen in my life. Um, bonkers do they they almost take out the drone the drone that's like two miles in in you know up in the air or something maybe not two miles it's like it's up there right it's way the hell up there and look these the explosions he drops a second grenade why dude why why <laughs> just mass and that's actually one of the smaller ones that was actually one of the smaller explosions That's actually one of the smaller ones. One more time here. And you can see the drone is dropping too, just, you know, just because that's protocol, I guess, for what they're doing here. But he didn't need to. Boom, dude. Boom. That's one of the smaller ones. That's one of the smaller ones we got. Um, so that's just a little hint. We got a couple more clips, but we're getting to the big booms. Oh, strelyat, me strelyat. Here is um, Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainians taking a Russian soldier prisoner. Now, Draven, it's not an issue. It's 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 not an issue. Ukraine has had. Uh, we'll we'll get into the map. We'll get into the map situation. But Ukraine losing Bakhmut. That's once again. That's part of the strategy. They're literally taking. They're 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 taking both sides of Bakhmut. The last thing Russia should be doing is moving forward. Is 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 moving. You know towards Kiev. It's a terrible mistake. You're going to overextend yourself and get surrounded. But yeah, okay, technically they took fucking Bakhmut, whatever. But you know, whatever. I'm not quite sure where he's at. Is is he oh it's is he right there? Yeah, I think this is him. Bitch, take off your armor. Um, love to see it. Love to see it. Love to see it. Um, here's here's just another. I got a couple of them here. Uh, another 
Soldier being taken prisoner. I think if if Russia escalates, if Russia were were to do something like chemical weapons or a nuke, we would see the United States put boots on the ground. I think if if you know if Russia just starts you know bigger bigger cruise missiles and you know you know bigger bigger bombs, they've gotten away with the phosphorus stuff. Um, I think it depends on you know how Russia wants to escalate. That's how they've always that's that's how this whole thing has been. It's been the Western Alliance kind of tiptoeing, right? That's why it took so long to get tanks into Ukraine, right? Because well, we we got to make it. We want to save face. We got to make it a response to Russia's aggression. We can't, you know, it's the stupid geopolitical game. Um, so I think if the United States is if if they do put boots on the ground, it it won't be because Ukraine is losing, um, per se. It'll be a response to Russia's escalation. But if 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 Ukraine throws in the towel and gives Russia Crimea and her son and the Donbas and just says, "Okay, we're done," the United States is not going to send in boots on the ground. No, I don't think so. China, China talks a big game. China talks a big game, but they don't want that smoke. They don't want that fucking heat. China, China is more scared of its own people than they than they are of the United States. And if 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 what is if the if what was happening if if what's happening to Russia in terms of economic sanctions and all the punishment were to happen to China, especially with its you know massive connection to the United States. Um, the Chinese government would be sweating bullets at the, at, you know, because they they, they got to deal with 10 million hungry Chinese that are knocking on their door. So at the end of the day, China talks a big game. They talk a big, big game about, oh, we're going to do this to Taiwan. We're going to do this, that to Taiwan. And it's ours. And how we're insulted that you would even consider Taiwan to be independent. They They talk all that shit, but they don't want that smoke. At the end of the day, their economy is too tied to everything. Their government is is too it's it's too necessary to have economic stability to keep their government in line, you know, to keep the people in line and the government in line. I mean, if Xi Jinping wants to ruin, you know, wants to ruin his authoritarian setup just like Putin is, you know, you know, Putin is the king of the world, man. Putin's over here taking Super Bowl rings off of, you know, American celebrities and and keeping it and like, you know, just strutting around like a total chad. Now he's like he's pooping his pants. He's a fucking embarrassment to the, you know, n- national world stage, right? I'm just I'm not saying he actually pooped his pants. I'm just saying like, you know, the perception, right? He just completely shit the bed. Right? Do you think Xi Jinping wants to deal with that? Yeah, and I agree, Dra- Draven. Can we get some public transportation in this motherfucker? Pretty intense shit, this, this footage. Damn, bro. Look at this guy right here with the fucking gun. Damn. Damn, bro. There you go. That's what taking a prisoner looks like. Um, this is this is beyond hilarious. I'm sorry. This is just one of those comical moments in war. Um, my messages are not showing for some reason. Oh, I'm sorry, Davey. Let me take a look here. I'm seeing your messages now. Tw- Twitch is weird like that sometimes. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Hold on. Hold on. There you go. The the destroy the Russians was being blocked. Destroy the 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 saying what you were saying. Destroy the completely destroy the Russian army that was being flagged. Z is confusing. He's very contradictory. I, I well, I think he's intentionally the the things that he's saying. I think it's intentionally contradictory and confusing. But their China's actions speak louder than words, right? China's actions speak louder than words. I just don't see it. I I just don't see. I mean, it's, it's not even a, you know, it's one thing to have a land border, right, with this country and then attempt an invasion, just, you know, just rolling over, you know, but it's a whole other thing to, it, to have an island, right? Because you have to stage, you're not hiding that. You're not, what, what are you going to, how are you going to hide the, the, the troop ships, the carriers, the, the mobilization, you know, right at the, right at the shore? 
You're not hiding any of that, dude. And the United States is 100% right. The, the moment the United States saw any kind of mobilization like that, getting ready for an invasion, the entire motherfucking Navy would surround Taiwan, would surround Taiwan. Dude. I mean, it's just, I just don't. It's a lot of, it's a lot of this. It's a lot of this. I just don't see it. You know, I just don't see it. Anyway, back to the videos here. Russian soldiers were taken prisoner after oversleeping in their trenches. Oh, 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 they they desperately needed a good night's sleep. All they wanted was a good night. They just needed a solid eight and they'd be back in the game. And Ukrainian couldn't even give them that, dude. Couldn't even give them, couldn't even give the, he couldn't even give the Russians a solid eight hours to sleep. No. Nope. Ukrainian military does not sleep. Ukrainian military does not sleep. <laughs> They're all snoozing. They're all snoozing and the Ukrainian military shows up. All right, get the fuck out of your trenches, dumbasses. We saw you were oversleeping and, and our drone footage showed that you were oversleeping. So we felt pretty confident taking your positions. <laughs> Oh, you cannot write this stuff. You literally could not write this. I'm sorry. I was dreaming about not invading your country and going back home. Unorganized during the winter, they were freezing to death because of corruption and had no supplies. Yeah, talk about lessons from the past, right? It's so funny. Like, you know, Russia was so prepared in the in the winter, you know, when they were fighting Germany and what, you couldn't find a couple winter coats you know you the 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 issue wasn't that they didn't have winter coats is that they didn't have the the logistics they didn't have the logistics the supply lines going to the front line they were way they they thought it was going to be a three day war in and out quickie war we don't have to worry about supply lines we don't have to worry about logistics boy they were wrong boy they were wrong but yeah here we are yeah, the, the, the corrupt military leaders just sold off a bunch of it. Or it was legitimately sold off as surplus, right? Okay, folks. Here's the wa-boom. Here's the wa-wa-wa. No, no, this actually, this is not the largest explosion I'm going to show you. I cannot believe I'm saying this. This is actually not the largest explosion I'm going to show you. But it's a biggie. This motherfucker, I mean atomized atomized there is nothing left Not a, not a wheel, not a piece of scrap metal, nothing, dude. Obliterated. Um, apparently, this was like, it was like ammo or something. You know, it just caught it perfectly. Just caught it fucking perfectly. You know, the ammo didn't have time to cook off. It just like catalyst explosion, right? It's full of mines. Okay. <laughs> I I just I I didn't think explosions that big existed. I thought this shit was the realm of movies and video games. I did not think something could be atomized actually. Holy shit. Holy shit, dude. And that is that is not the biggest explosion I'm 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 showing you today. Um yeah, that's coming up. One more link and it's coming up. It's the second to last link. Uh, I thought this was great. Um, great example of modern technology taking care of uh, a very old problem in war. You know, what do you do with a minefield? How do you, how do you reduce the danger you, you put yourself in when, very loud, by the way. Sorry, Kim Goblin, I didn't mean to do that. Um, how do you reduce the danger of your side when clearing a minefield? How do you, you know, what's the best way of doing that? 
So we have a totally ingenious solution here. Fully remote control looks like some kind of, you know, you know, kind of backhoe, some kind of farming kind of thing happening here. Uh, reinforced with a little um, metal up front. There's apparently cameras and sensors all over this thing. Um, uh, I think pushing. Is it pushing or pulling? Yeah, pulling. Uh, pulling it. No, that's pushing. Yeah, they push it. They push it. That makes sense. Right, so it's remote controlled, as you can see here. Uh, you know, pushing. I think these are, I'm not sure if these are rubber or if these are uh, metal. Not quite sure. But they they don't give a shit about mines. Um, you'll, you'll see mines exploding and this, this thing it sleeps on it, dude. Look at this big ass machine this guy's got. All right, so just going through a field, remote control. There's, there's one going off. Another one. Getting the job done. Hell yeah, boy. And they show you what these mines look like. So these these are the ones that are dropped out of the, uh, the, the cluster munition style, right? They, you know, Russia fires one cruise missile and seeds a whole field uh, with, with mines. So now this is great, right? So even under fire, right? This thing, you know, this could be an active battle. You know, this thing's getting shot at, you know, you know fired at by Russians. No, it's, it's remote control. You're good. You know, hey, if we lose it, we lose it. That sucks. But we didn't lose our most precious asset, right? A trained soldier, right? Love to see it. Fucking love to see it. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about. You know? Love to see it. All right, here we go, folks. The biggest, ex literally, this is the biggest explosion I've ever seen in my life. E the, I, I can't think of another one bigger. J a jet of molten, what appears to be molten metal shot straight in the air. Apparently, this is another ammunition depot uh, that Ukraine has blown up. Um, I just, it's, it left me speechless. I, I probably watched this 300 times. Sky turns fucking black. Follow up explosions. Look at this. Look at this. Just a just a vein of molten metal. You bought a skull rain, rain coming raining uh, in the sky, right? Wow. Oh yeah, no. So just to clarify, this is uh, Kamensky, Ukraine, and I believe this was this was a Russian ammunition depot. Yeah, satellite image of the result of a missile strike early in the morning of May thirteenth on the Ukrainian ammunition. Oh, oh. <clears throat> bummer, <laughs> bummer. So this was a Ukrainian ammo dump. Oh, that's a bummer. And just some satellite imagery of what it looked like beforehand. We got, you know, trees surrounding buildings. And then, wow, obliteration. Obliteration. Um, quite a shame that this is a Ukrainian ammo dump. Still the biggest explosion I've ever seen in my life. Boom. Boom, dude. God damn. God damn. I mean, one more time being up that, like being this far away, that's one thing. But being right there, it's totally different. I mean, you can see it. You can see the, the blast wave, you know, coming right through. The epic mushroom cloud. The one in Lebanon was pretty fucking big. I don't know. There's something cinematic about this one, though. There's something like, you know, Hollywood about this one.
for me, it's the follow-up explosions. It's it's the you know it's the ex, it's the extra booms beneath it that kind of one more time right there. It's it's that, and then the whole sky changing color. That right. There. I mean, listen to that, dude. That sounds like a sound effect from Hollywood. It's the camera doing the lighting thing. I see. I see what you're talking about. I mean, come on, though. This this vein, this vein of molten metal. You bought the skull, can offer. That's a boom, dude. That's a big oh, ass boom. Yeah, it's not. That's Godzilla. <laughs> I think this is if this is yeah, this is Davy. So this is gonna be Lebanon. Beirut, okay, and, and Be Beirut. There are troubling new allegations tonight about that deadly port explosion in Beirut. Yeah, Sources this, so this this is really, so apparently um, some somebody who was corrupt was allowing incredibly volatile materials to just be stockpiled in this in this warehouse that was like on the on the dock you know in the in the shipping area um they incredibly volatile materials you know and just apparently it was just corruption and you know people just like ah whatever i'm not even going to worry about it and this is a result of you know no regulations and no safety standards when it comes to hazardous materials in video from the day of the blast you can see white flashes what appear to be fireworks going off before the massive explosion No, Ed, you're right, Davey. When you're right, you're right, man. Look at let's just slow it down. Let's just slow it down. It's, it's, it is is right out of Hollywood. Right out of Hollywood. Look at this. For the mass. I mean, you see the shockwave just annihilate buildings. Yeah, damn, dude. Oh, oh, I mean, right before, right before the final frame, you can see, oh my God, dude. Ooh. Nasty. Nasty. And then there was, and then there was a, wasn't there a follow-up explosion? Is that what this one is? Or this this is this is them slowing. We're we're watching slow down footage and slow, but look at this. Oh no! Yikes! Yeah, so that's the follow up explosion right there. This is the main one. I don't think there were any others. Oh, okay. So there's only one blow up, one one boom. Jesus. There's a whole there's a whole body of water in between it too. Wow. All right. Well, as per usual, we're getting our final final video is going to be a map update. Oh, unfortunate. No. <laughs> Reporting from Ukraine, they're probably working on their video right now. Let's double check and see if we have a Dennis video. Let's get our map update, different angles. Oh, I don't have time to, <laughs> I have nine minutes left, dude. So I got to get a map update here. Uh, we'll, we'll do more. Hello, my friends. We'll and do more welcome, cool but... explosions next time. Um, but yeah, let's get our map update from your boy, Dennis. Everyone loves Dennis. Come on. Let's go for the situation review on the front lines. Let's move to the Bakhmut city. Some of you said yesterday that Sorry, I Davey. didn't review the Bakhmut city. Basically, because it was no any change for the yesterday. So day before yesterday, yesterday. But today there was a big change. Wagner's took the Bakhmut city. Well, on this military map, we mm -hmm. may see that still this part is not under their control. Oh, what, a, but... what a victory. What a victory. Right? Are, are are the propaganda Davy? Maybe you can tell me because you're more plugged in than I am. Are the propagandists actually running around social media claiming this is a victory? I mean, that's pretty fucking sad.
as Wagner's officially claimed, and yes, I may confirm that, that they have took all of the city under their control. Is it the success of the Russian army? Not really, it's the success of the Wagner private military force. Sure, yeah. They showed that they can take the city using some of their resources, like prisoners from Russia. And now Wagner's do not have that resource, so they are unable to hold in Bakhmut for a very long time. That is why today Prigozhin announced the second time already that they would withdraw their forces from the Bakhmut city on 25th of May, so very very soon in 5 days. Now Wagner's will go on defense, uh, they will build some of the trenches in that area, but it will not help really, yeah. so definitely they took the Bakhmut city. I mean, it's, it's you know, even, even for the propagandists, it's like, this is not a victory. You know, while we're being surrounded in the city with, that we supposedly conquered, after losing hundreds of thousands of men and leveling the city, I mean, it's just, it's... It's such a wet fart of a victory. I mean, uh, hopefully it's more of a morale destroyer than a morale booster, right? Because um, it's like, okay, oh, okay, on to the next one. On to the next one. Okay, we did it. We got Bakhmut. On to the next one. It's like, we got to do that all over again. We're going we're gonna to just another meat grinder, meat grinder after meat grinder after meat grinder, right? That's got to be a big hit to morale. They lost, according to our calculations, around 70,000 soldiers. Here we're speaking about the wounded soldiers as well. And from the strategic point of view, Bakhmut is not that important compared, for example, to Avdivka. We'll speak about it a little <laughs> bit later. But definitely, they've took this area uh, under their control. As for the Ukrainian camp... I mean, Progrosian is loyal to fucking Russia, man. I mean, I guess there's that talk about him talking to Ukraine about having... I don't know if that's true. But, man, he's a Jew. He's working with the West. Really? Really? Is that why he threw, like, his entire reputation uh, into the toilet for Russia? Country attack. How are we gonna check... People used to be afraid of Wagner. Check out the timeline, so it was no movement from our forces recently. And our guys in this area, they just got the call to leave their positions. Yeah. So it was the organized well, move out from the... Hromove yeah. over here look and from Ivanovska sides. over here. So the counterattack actually played a great role because we pushed the Russian forces further from yeah. the road and they were unable to shoot at us very precisely. But Prigozhin himself says that taking Bakhmut is not as important as defending it. So today the Ukrainian command confirmed that the mission for now is to encircle the Bakhmut city from two of the sides. That is why Prigozhin wants to move his forces away and put the regular Russian army on their positions. My friends, before we continue, let me tell you there about you the go. partner. All right, folks, there, there's your map update. I think we, I do have five minutes, so let's get a different angle here. But um, I, I do want to see this different angle of, the, of this uh, Beirut explosion. Uh, but yeah, there you go, folks. That's your map update. Thank you so much, Dennis. Thank you so much, Dennis. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Guys just driving down the fucking road. All right, while we're, while we're checking out these multiple angles, uh, thank you, Davey, for this link. Um, I don't like speculating about who will surround who until Ukraine does anything we shouldn't speculate. Sure, okay. I think it's fair to speculate that that is what Ukraine is trying to do. Ukraine, it does appear like Ukraine is trying to surround Bakhmut. Um, but yeah, no, Garbage Fuel Awards are going to be handed out here. Thank you so much to everyone participating in the chat. Um, especially Davey. Thank you so much, Davey, for all your contributions. Big props to Woke Patriot for providing some great links. Thank you, Woke Patriot. Um... Big props. You know, we're going to go ahead and give uh, a Garbage Fuel Award to Draven's Lowell, who stuck around. I really enjoyed all of your wonderful comments and your insight on the situation. Thank you for being plugged in and paying attention and watching the show. Big Garbage Fuel Award going to go up to your boy, Tim Goblin, holding it down over there in Ukraine, giving us that essential Ukraine perspective. So thank you, Kem Goblin, for giving us that amazing Ukraine perspective. Thank you so much. 
Big props to your boy, Lenny, number one financial contributor to the stream. Lenny, thank you so much, Lenny. Big Garbage Fuel Award goes to you. Hopefully your gig is going well and you're rocking out. Um, all right. Props to you, Astro Warrior, if you're even still here, for sticking around, even though you were pissing me off. But Davey was correct. You were being nuanced. Um, so props to you. No Garbage Fuel Award. That's a bridge too far for me. But props to you for contributing and being in the chat. Thank you, Astral Warrior. Uh, big props to Vitter Bendetti for over there from Brazil. Looks like he didn't have much to say. I'd like to welcome new viewer Digital Dan. Thank you, Digital Dan, for that follow and your contr contributions in the chat. Thank you for being here, Digital Dan. Um, and that's about all. It looks like, you know, we had a lot of chat activity, but I guess some people, Borscht next stream. I think I want to try Borscht. I want to try something a little bit more flavorful. I don't I don't know how you Ukrainians, Polish people are eating these pierogies, man. They're kind of bland. It kind of tastes like a dog biscuit. No offense. But you know how like dog biscuits don't have Wait. Wait. I for, I wait, I forgot. Most human beings haven't ate a dog biscuit like I have. I ate a dog biscuit. I was curious. I was like, what the fuck do these things even taste like? Terrible. There's no so it's like a it's like a biscuit without you know, it's like a cookie without any sugar. But thank you, uh, Draven's Lowell. Thank you, Chem Goblin. Everybody. Thank you, Davey. Everybody. I just want to remind everybody that there's a simple three-step pro program that I've devised that can create political change. That can, you can actually contribute positively to changing the world around you. Maybe not change everything, but you can contribute. It's just this simple. Listen up. Take some notes. Step one, inform yourself. It's what you did just now. Congratulations. Step two, find Google search, a progressive political organization in your area, and join it. It's as, just as easy as signing an online web form or just showing up to a meeting. You don't have to fill out any form. You just show up, and wow, you're an activist. It's literally that easy. All these, all these organizations are looking for volunteers everywhere. Find something you are passionate about. Find an organization that's fighting for it and join it. Because step three, you got to put in the work. You got to treat your citizenship as, a, as, as you know, you got to upkeep that citizenship with a little bit of effort, with a little bit of labor. Couple hours a month, couple bucks a month. You can be part of positive change. You can be part of progressive positive change. You, you're not going to change the whole world, but you can be part of this movement to create positive change, to fight against the bullies, the fascists, the authoritarians. Democracy is the way to go. Democracy is morally correct. And defend, def, defend that shit with your whole heart, knowing that you are right. Knowing that you are right. Defending democracy, defending liberty, defending freedom of speech, defending human rights. You are in the right. You are morally correct. Don't let the gaslighters tell you otherwise. Don't let the gaslighters say, oh, we gotta we need a strong man. We gotta do we gotta do it this way. We gotta do it that way. No, we gotta let the people decide what they want. But don't forget that, folks. All right, I've been Abandoned Nihilism. You know, like and subscribe. Check out the YouTube. Check out the Discord. I really need to put up my social media stuff in my goodbye page so that people can link and click on my stuff and do all that and like and subscribe. At the very least, if you like it, you want to check out the Discord, come on by. Um, I do have a YouTube channel as well. Be sure to check out the YouTube channel. Like and subscribe, folks. All that kick-ass kick, kick -ass killer content you can find right there, right at your fingertips. All right, folks. Peace in that motherfucking Middle East. Glory to the Ukrainian democracy. And we'll be seeing each other very, very soon. Keep it real. Keep yourself safe. Fine. Keep putting that knowledge in here. Don't, don't let them. Don't let them win. Fight back. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you, Davey. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up on Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> what a piece of shit that place is. I don't have that in there yet, Kim Goblin. 
<laughs> Thank you so much, Kem Goblin. Thank you so much, Davey. I'll work out. That's added to the list. I'll get it on there. Get it on there. Thank you, Davey. Thank you, Kem Goblin. <laughs> All right, everybody. Be safe. Sound of the underground. I gotta go change my kids' diaper. All right, everybody. Thank you so much.